Hey developers, today we are going to address one of the most common problems that developers face when they're using Next Auth in Next.js and that is how to store and access backend JWTs with Next Auth in Next.js. Let me show you the problem. Here I have a backend API for login that I can send a post request to it in order to log in into the backend server. So here I have to pass the username and password inside the body of the post request. So if I click on the send, I get an unauthorized 401 error and that's because I use the wrong username and password. So if I send the right username and password and send the request, I get a JSON object in response which describes the user info and most importantly, I get an access token JWT inside this JSON response. So now I can grab this access token and go to the another backend API which retrieved the post of a certain user. And now if I click on the send, again, I get an unauthorized 401 error message. And that's because inside the header, we didn't include our access token. So here we have an authorization header and inside it, we are going to have a bearer string and then a blank space and then after that we paste our access token that we got in the login request. So now if I click on the send it gives us a list of posts of the user with the ID of one but the problem is how to store and access these backend JWTs inside our next auth and next.js application. To show you exactly what I mean, I open up the Next.js project with Next Auth in the VS Code and here, as you can see, I have set up the Next Auth with the credential provider here and here we have a post request to the backend API login and then we return the user and access token into the session. So if I run this application, Here we have a sign in button and let me here pass in the username and password and if I click on the sign in here is the name of the user and let's open up the console here and here the session we just have a name and the email nothing more but our backend API send us more information if I go to the insomnia here and to the login, you can see the other information like phone, uh, address, zip, and most importantly, our access token, which disappear in the user object inside the next auth session. And this is a very common problem when we are using next auth in the Next.js. So how we can fix this problem? Stay with me till the end of this video and you will find. Okay, I open up a Next.js version 13 application and the first thing I want to do is to install the Next Auth package. So I open up the terminal and say npm i Next Auth. Okay, and next I go to the pages directory and inside the API directory, I'm going to create a directory called auth and inside it, I'm going to create a file inside the square brackets. I say dot 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 next off dot ts so remember this is not a detailed tutorial about the next auth if you want to know about the details of the next auth package and what these files do you can watch my other video on this topic and the link of that video is now on the screen and also i put the link to that video in the description below so in this file the first thing I want to do is to export default next auth, which comes from the next auth. So let me import it from the next auth. And then inside it, I'm going to pass an object. And inside this object, we have to specify the providers list. So I go to the next auth documentation. And inside the provider section, I look for the credentials so I chose credentials because I want to log in into the application 
with just username and password. And here I just copy this provider and replace the provider list with that. So this is a credential provider, as you can see. So let's import the credential provider from the providers of the next auth. And here you can see that the credentials consist of username and password. And this is the authorize method, which is the most important method in the credential provider. And inside this method, we have to authenticate our user. So let me get rid of this dummy authentication and replace it with the real world one. So here I just copy and paste a piece of code which sent a post request to the backend API login, which we have seen in the introduction section of this video. And inside the body of this post request, we send the username and password. We extract the username from the credentials and also the password. And then we get the user from the response of this post request. And here we just check if the user is not undefined, then return the user into the session of the next auth and else return now, which means that the user is not authenticated. So the first thing, so the next thing I want to do is to go to the app directory and inside I'm going to create a component called provider, provider.tsx and let's create a functional component here and let's create an interface for the props of this component. So I'm, I'm going to call it props and inside it they're going to be children which is going to be React node. Okay. And here just replace the div with this session provider, which comes from the next auth slash React, as you can see here. And then render our children inside the session provider. So now every page and component inside the session provider can access to the session of the next auth. So I go to the layout page and wrap our application with the provider component that we've just created. Okay, that's it. And now let's save this and run the application. Okay, let's open it up. And here it says that the React context is unavailable in the server components. So I go to the provider and mark it with the use client. Okay, and let's refresh and you can see that the error is gone and if I click on the sign in and enter my username and password, which is admin and the password is 123 and click on the login and you can see the name of the user is now on the app bar. So if I go to the app bar component, you can see that we retrieve the session from the use session hook that comes from the next us slash react and then we check that if the session has the user inside it we're gonna render the session that user that name and if the user is undefined which means that the user is not authenticated just show a button with the sign in inside it and on the on click event of this button we are going to call the sign in function that comes from the next auth slash react. So by calling this function, it will redirect us automatically into the next auth signing page and it just handle for us everything from the signing. Actually, when we click on the signing in the login page, it calls the authorize method inside the credential provider. So if the user is available, it returns the user to the session and if not, it just return now. So I go to the app bar and here we can see that when the user is authenticated, instead of signing button, we show a sign out button and inside the onclick event of that button, we call the sign out function, which again comes from the next auth react. So signing page or login page is uh, automatically created by the next auth, but we can have our custom login page. And if you want to know how to create a custom login page for the next auth, you can see my other video, which the link is on the screen now. And also here, as you can see, when the session is retrieved from the use session, we log the session into the console of the browser. So I go to the browser and open up the console. 
and here in the session we have a user we just have a name and the email property but as you can see in the insomnia let's maximize this we have a username phone email address zip role and most importantly access token which now is not present in the user object So in order to fix this problem, I go back to the VS code and go to the next.auth.ts file. And after the provider, I'm going to specify the callbacks. So I say callbacks object and inside it, we're going to define an async function called JWT, which take an object that contains the token and the user. And then we spread the token and the user and combine them as a single object and return them as JWT to the next auth. And the second, I'm going to define another async function called session, which takes the session token user inside an object as a parameter. And here inside it, I'm going to say session.user equals to token. So the token is this return object here that the JWT function returns. So now if I save this and here I sign out, sign out and again I sign in username admin and the password is 123 and sign in with the credentials and here open up the session and now the user object has the access token address and other properties that returns from the backend API so the most important things here the access token so now we have access to the JWT access token. So these two function in the callbacks fix the problem of losing backend JWTs in the next R session. So I go to the app bar again and here I say session that user, but the user here doesn't provide us other completion for the access token and other properties that returns by the backend API. So in order to fix this problem, I go to the root path of our project and create a folder called typus. And inside it, I'm gonna create a file called next-auth.d.ts. Remember, if you're not using TypeScript, you can skip this part. Just these two function in the callback object do the tricks for you. But if you're using TypeScript and you want the auto completion, you have to do this section. So the first thing in this file, I'm going to import the next auth from the next auth package. And then I'm going to declare a module called next auth. And inside it, I am going to have a interface called session. Just pay attention to the spelling. And inside the session, we have a user object and inside it, I'm going to define the properties of the user object that are the same as the properties that this backend login API returns. So I'm going to have a ID, username, name, email, address, zip, role, and most importantly, access token. So remember again, that the spelling of these properties must be the same as the properties that are returns by the backend login API. And now we're done with this file and let's save this and go back to the app bar.tsx and open up the session.user and if I open up the properties of the user you can see that we have access token along with the other properties of the user object that are returned by the backend API. Okay, let's remove this line and if I go to the next auth you can see that here we have got an error and that's because the interfaces that we have defined here. So in order to get rid of this error, we can say that token as any and the error is gone. And for the last part of this video, let's test the access token and send it along with a post request to the backend to see if it works or not. So I go to the home page. First of all, I extract the session from the use session and let's import it from the next auth slash react and then define an async function for retrieving the post of a certain user with this ID 
from the backend API. And you can see in the headers of this request, we use the authorization property and then set its value to a bearer string and then extract uh, the access token from the user object inside our session from the next off. And then after that, we set the post state of this component with the response object. So let's define the post state here. So I'm going to say post and set post and let's import the use state from the React. And here in the JSX, I'm going to define a button which says that get user post inside it and in the onclick event of this button we call the fetch post function that we defined here and here after the button we just render the post object into the screen with the json.string file that simple so now let's go back to our browser and as you can see we're not signing so if I click on the get user post, we got an unauthorized 401 message. And if I click on the sign in and enter my username and 1234 password and click on the login. And now you can see that the user is logged in. And now if I click on the get user post, you can see that we don't get an unauthorized, but instead we get the post of the user from the backend API. So if I go back to the VS code, you can see that inside the headers of the request into the backend, we just have to define a property called authorization and set its value to a bearer string and then a blank space and then put our access token, which is stored inside the user object of the next off session. So that's it. We can store and access the backend JWT inside the next off session. And yeah, I think that's it for this video. And if you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for my next video. Bye-bye.